who is described as a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, and separated unto the gospel of God. A. Peter B. James C. John D. Paul Romans 1.1 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. This opening verse in the book of Romans serves as an introduction to Paul's letter to the Roman Christians, outlining his identity and purpose in writing this important epistle. Who is referred to as the Son of God with power, declared as such by the resurrection from the dead? A. Peter B. David C. John D. Jesus Romans 1 3 concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh Romans 1 4 and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead in Romans 1 3 to 4 Paul sets the stage for his discussion of the gospel and God's righteousness he highlights Jesus as fully human and fully God his role as the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, and his ultimate authority as the resurrected Lord. These verses provide a strong foundation for the theological themes developed in the rest of the book of Romans. To whom does the greeting extend in the opening of the letter? A. To the Romans. B. To the Corinthian. C. To the Ephesians. D. To the Galatians. Romans 1 7 to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in Romans 1 7 Paul establishes a warm and gracious tone for his letter to the Romans he affirms their special status as loved by God and reminds them of their calling to holiness this verse also reflects Paul's desire for God's grace and peace to be with the Roman Christians as they read and receive his message what is described as the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, first for the Jew, and then for the Greek? A. The Torah. B. The Ten Commandments. C. The Gospel of Christ. D. The Old Testament. Romans 1.16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. In Romans 1.16, Paul conveys his unwavering commitment to the gospel as the power of God unto salvation. He underscores the universal nature of salvation through faith in Christ and the historical progression of the gospel's dissemination. This verse is central to Paul's message and his mission to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. How do the just shall live, according to Romans 1.17? A. By good deeds. B. By knowledge. C. By faith. D. By prayer. Romans 1.17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In Romans 1.17, Paul introduces the central theme of the righteousness of God and its availability to humanity through faith in Jesus Christ. This theme will be further developed in the subsequent chapters of Romans, where Paul explores the implications of this righteousness for both Jews and Gentiles. What do those who profess themselves to be wise become? A. Legends B. Profound Scholars C. Fools D. Saints Romans 1.22 Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. In Romans 1.22 Paul is addressing the spiritual condition of humanity and the consequences of rejecting God. 
He uses this verse to underscore the irony of those who claim wisdom but, in their rejection of God, ultimately demonstrate foolishness in their choices and actions. This sets the stage for Paul's discussion of the need for salvation through faith in Christ. What did some people worship and serve more than the Creator, thus changing the truth of God into a lie? A. Idols. B. Money. C. The Creature. D. Angels. Romans 1.25 Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. In Romans 1.25 Paul is addressing the spiritual condition of those who have turned away from the worship of the one true God and have engaged in idolatry. He highlights the consequences of such actions, which involve the exchange of truth for falsehood and the worship of created things. This sets the stage for Paul's broader discussion on the need for salvation through faith in Christ. Romans 1.27 describe a behavior where both women and men engage in actions that are against nature. What did these men and women lust after? A. Material possessions. B. Power and authority. C. One another. D. Righteousness. Romans 1.26 For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Romans 1.27 And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. It's important to note that the interpretation of these verses has been a topic of debate and discussion within Christianity. Different denominations and scholars have varying perspectives on the meaning and application of these verses. Some view them as a condemnation of same-sex relations, while others emphasize the historical and cultural context in which they were written. What did God do to those who did not like to retain God in their knowledge? A. Cause them to go blind. B. Curse their children. C. Turn them over to a reprobate mind. D. Sold their souls to Satan. Romans 1.28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Romans 1.28 Serves as part of Paul's larger argument in Romans, where he outlines the sinful state of humanity apart from God and the consequences of turning away from Him. It underscores the idea that rejection of the knowledge of God can lead to moral degradation and unrighteous behavior. Even though they knew the things they committed were worthy of death, what did they do? A. Repented and sought forgiveness. B. Faced the consequences bravely. C. Took pleasure in them. D. Shared their guilt with others. Romans 1.32 who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Romans 1.32 serves as part of Paul's larger argument in the book, where he outlines the universal need for salvation and the consequences of human sinfulness. It underscores the idea that despite knowing the moral standards of God, some individuals persist in sinful behavior and even encourage others to do the same. How many did you get right? Stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe.